call the meeting of the uh, second meeting of the Arlington Finance Committee to order. I want to thank you all for being here. And uh, we've got a bunch to do, including going through the 82 article warrant. This was really scary until I realized I went into last year's and we had um, between the regular town meeting and the special town meeting, we actually had 83 articles. So, and we managed to get through it in six nights of town meeting. So uh, yeah. that, that was pretty good. Uh, I want to thank Charlie for taking over la uh, last week. Uh, got into a conflict. Might have a couple more of you try it out for uh, over the next uh, couple months. Uh, so let me go through. Uh, contact list. So all of you had the con should have the contact list now. Uh, this is uh, our basic communication. So if there are any changes, please, in the next couple days, get them back to Liz. Any corrections, telephone numbers, emails, things like that. Um, please get them back to Liz, and we'll get that set. Now, one thing to keep in mind, I say this every year, but especially for the new people. Uh, we have an open meeting law, and so there's certain things we cannot do on this email. So the email can be used to the whole group only for administrative issues, timing of meetings, uh, uh, things like that, or, or sending out a contact list or things like that. We can't have any policy discussions on the email list because it's, it's, uh, that'll be a violation of the open meeting law. The only policy discussions among the whole committee have to take place right here. Uh, obviously, if you want to talk to somebody else individually, that you're free to do. Um, you're not supposed to poll the committee. I used to do that occasionally in the old days. Can't, not supposed to do that. Uh, but you can talk to other people and get a sense of, you know, of an issue that's upcoming and you want to get their opinion. That's perfectly legal. So. Um, again, please get any corrections to the contact list and uh, 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 to Liz, and we'll get that straightened out. Uh, now, some of you I know have met with department heads and, uh, already. Uh, general thoughts on meeting with them. Understand what the changes are in the budget and why. Uh, do they make sense? Uh, can the increases be modified? Primarily looking at increases, obviously, here. I don't think our job is necessarily on a, on a professional level to substitute our judgment you know, for how many pickup trucks or uh, uh, things are needed for a certain department. Um, but is to, to evaluate, are, is what they're doing, is it reasonable? Um, and if it passes the reasonable test and within reason to so what you see as far as the increase uh, or the change, uh, then I, I think that can pass through. Um, but if you can see, well, you know, can you get by with X dollars instead of Y dollars, uh, you know, and, the, and they can buy into that, that's fine. We, we can use all the money we need. Uh, last year, or last week, uh, the manager and the uh, so, uh, deputy manager presented the five-year plan. Now, in the five-year plan, I guess let me just take a little divergence on this. Now, for you people, especially the new people, the five-year plan, plan is really the heart and soul of the financial plan of the town of Arlington. And it's been that way since 2005. But what's, what, uh, for you who happen to have it, if you're not, one of the goals now, since we just passed a debt exclusion, a massive debt exclusion, uh, the biggest this town and most other towns have had to pass, as well as a substantial override, You'll see down the bottom as far as balance, revenues versus expenditures and zero balances. That's the goal. When you get to fiscal 24, which uh, we'll be dealing with uh, in a few years from now, you have a deficit. And then a bigger deficit, and then the deficits keep going. So at some point in 2023, we're going to have to have another override. unless. You know, the, the, the town wins some lottery tickets or something like that. Now, well, we passed overrides fairly successfully the last couple of times, amazingly so. But I want you to keep in mind 
that the taxpayer is about to get hit over the head with a two by four when the high school bond issue debt service starts hitting it. Um, it it's going to be $200 million, even spread over 30 years plus interest. It's going to have a big impact. I think they projected about 800 bucks, you know, for the average uh, taxpayer. So the next override might not be that simple, <laughs> might not be that easy. Um, you know, pe uh, people are looking at their mortgages plus that kind of an override. So any additional monies that we can save and stay within the guidelines of what was promised to the, tax to the taxpayers in the override as far as increases to the town and increases to the schools, uh, we should put away in the override stabilization fund so that uh, we can get the override down to a 10% increase. That's what we've passed the last several years, a 10% increase. Um, you get over that, plus the 2.5%, and it starts to you know, get a little cumbersome. Right now, an over a three-year override would, would be about a 13.3% increase, approximately. So need to get that override down. Now, there are some, some conservatism built into the five-year plan. So it, it, it's, it's not wildly hard to do. But anything we could do uh, would be helpful. Uh, ask about new employees above entrance. So new employees, technically in the, in the plan, which is in your budget, uh, should go uh, to entrance. Well, you know, with a 3% unemployment rate, you might not be able to hire somebody at entrance. So simply ask the department heads about that. If you see somebody who's a new employee at above entrance, ask them about it. Talk to them. If they have it at max, well, look, can you try a step three or something like that, or step two. Uh, uh, make sure that all the numbers are accurate according to the paying classification plan. So you have that in, in the book. You know, go down and check it and just make sure Department heads make errors, Sandy makes errors uh, sometimes. So if that can be corrected. And it, last thing I want is somebody at town meeting to jump up and say, wait a minute, that, that's not correct according to the paying classification plan. Uh, it shows maybe we're not keeping up. So make sure that uh, the numbers are, are accurate according to the plan. Uh, once they pass, you come back here and the entire finance committee passes it, uh, just, Give Sandy a call and let them know we've passed the public works budget. Uh, we've passed this with, you know, as presented. Uh, if the uh, health and human service budget, you know, we cut by uh, $2,000 because the pay plan wasn't quite right, uh, let Sandy know that and he'll pass it on to Ida, the controller, uh, to make sure that everybody's on the same page. Uh, so those are the things please be looking at as you're, as you're going through the plan. Um, Emails. Um, you should get a, uh, for those new people, you should have a town email address. Uh, we like to do all the uh, communications through the town email address. If all your communications on town business with anybody, so if you're sending something to Liz or sending something to me, just to me, uh, that has to be saved somehow. If you send it, you know, if you use the town email address, it's saved automatically. If the manager sends something to you, uh, it's saved automatically on his. Um, on the other hand, if you're for some reason using your own email address to send something out, what I do is I CC the town, my town email address. Um, if, you, uh, if you don't do that, somehow on your uh, email, uh, you need to save those. Just you know, move them over to, the, uh, uh, to a save file. Will anybody ever ask for these things? No, uh, but that's the law, that's, that's what you need to do. Uh, so again, the easiest way is just uh, you know, CC the town email address if you're sending it from, uh, from your own. Uh, okay. Okay, the uh, Finance Committee Appointing Authority which consists of myself, the town moderator, and the chairman of the Board of Trust Fund Commissioners, uh, has a policy out that finance committee members should not actively be involved in politics, actively publicly involved in politics. So 
on local politics. If it's involved in state politics, federal politics, don't care. You're, you're a citizen, you have all the rights. If it involves uh, referendums, debt exclusions, overrides, you can do anything you want. What the appointing authority does not want you getting involved is a school committee, moderator, clerk, selectman, um, and there's a history to that that I'll, I'll explain, especially for the new people. Um, now, if you want to support a selectman's candidate, you want to stuff envelopes for them, I don't know if people stuff envelopes anymore, but if you want to stuff envelopes for them behind the scenes, that's fine. Uh, we just don't want you on the corner of Mass Ave and, and Mystic or Pleasant Street waving signs or sending, email, uh, sending uh, letters to the advocate or to a website you know, that's public. Just don't do anything public. Uh, if you want to give money, just make sure it's below that threshold, whatever it is. Uh, does anybody know what the threshold is? 50 bucks. 50 bucks? So 45, max. Um, and the reason is to keep the Finance Committee out of politics. So when we take a strong position, say for example against the selectmen, um, the selectmen can't say, you know, well you just had it in for me, you opposed my election. And a uh, long, long time ago, uh, the many members of the Finance Committee, including the chairs and vice chairs, uh, took a strong position publicly in support of one candidate for treasurer. He didn't win. Ouch. And the selectman who was running for treasurer at the time did win. It took, it took probably 20 years for him to get over that. And he only got over it mildly. <laughs> so it, it, it's, uh, that might be an extreme case. We don't want to get involved in that. Our position should come up before the town meeting with nobody having suspicions that you were for or against any particular group. Any questions on that? Yes? And what about your spouse? Is it, should they also limit? Do they have the same name as you do? <laughs> well, same last name, not same first name. Your spouse is an independent citizen. Um, I would discourage it, but uh, no, they, they, they can do what they wish. Okay. Uh, Conflict of interest testing. I think Charlie went through that with you last week. Um, and then uh, Liz forwarded you an email from the town council. So everybody's got to take a conflict of interest. For those of you who have never taken it before, it's really not very, you go on the AG's website and, and they give you examples, you answer them, and then you take a little quiz at the end of each section? Yeah, it's really tough, but I passed. Okay, well, if Charlie can pass, you know, anybody. Anybody can do it. So you have to do that. When you get your little certificate of achievement, forward it to Liz, or give it to Liz, and uh, she'll keep a file of them, so we have that. Uh, and people who are signed up, uh, the new people or people who got reappointed this year, uh, when you get sworn at the clerk's office, they usually hand you a, a, a information on the conf a conflict of interest and open meeting law. Um, now for the new people, there is a finance committee handbook. Um, Liz, do you remember how to get copies of those? I'm sorry? I'll check. Okay. Uh, it used to be we, we, we would hand you a CD. The trouble is most people have laptops these days with no CD drives. So there's a way to get them off the Mass Municipal Association website. This is produced by the Association of Town Finance Committees. Uh, it was updated about two years ago. It has everything you want to know about being a, a finance committee, including things that you probably didn't want to know, but it's there. Uh, so Liz, could you work out with the new people uh, to get the handbook? Okay, uh, minutes. Okay, now in order to try to reduce the amount of trees that die, uh, Peter or Liz will send out the minutes after each meeting. Um, and I ask you to, uh, to review them. And if you see a correction, now especially when we get to your budgets, and you give your budgets out, check the minutes to make sure that they're correct. Um, because then they go on the website and they're very difficult to correct after that. So check the, all the numbers, especially of your budgets that come in. Uh, just, you know, go through and check everything. Make sure your attendance is, uh, is correct. 
Um, with that, are there any corrections to the minutes? You know, there's a spelling error that, um, <coughs> that Shalene uh, told me about. Her name starts with a P, I not a D. Last name. My last name has carried through starting with a D instead of a P. Okay. So P is correct. P is correct, not D. P as in Peter. Okay. Now, Peter sometimes will be tricky. He'll put a couple errors in here deliberately just to see if you catch them. So, any other corrections? Okay, does somebody want to make a motion? Some will be accepted. Second. Okay, move that the minutes be accepted as corrected and, and seconded. Any further comments or corrections? All those in favor, please say aye. Please say aye. aye. Please say aye. aye. Okay, uh, opposed? Okay, the minutes are accepted unanimously. Uh, okay, review the calendar for the next. Now, our job is basically to have all the business for the Finance Committee report complete by the end of March. So, um, Liz, did you give this to everybody or just me? Yes, everybody has it. Oh, everybody, okay. So if you look at these minutes, or the uh, calendar, uh, by the end of March, and you'll notice there's a hold on. We'll not have any hearings on March 25th or March 30th. Um, so please, you know, get, get the work to the greatest degree you can done right away. Um, all the articles on the uh, warrant, which are about to go through, we'll try to get all those hearings done in February. Um, now March, you'll see the CPC, that's the uh, capital, uh, I think that's just planning. Planning. Preservation Act. Losing capital that. Planning. Capital planning. So they're coming in on uh, Wednesday the 4th, and that usually takes a good chunk of the day, of the night. And then Minuteman, that usually doesn't take the whole night, but we'll have uh, there. Um, and then the school committee. Um, so all we have left is the uh, Community Preservation Act, right? Liz? They're on the 26th. Well, I have, um, Community Preservation? Aren't they the one on the 26th of February? Oh, you got them early. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I was I was just focusing on March. Okay. Okay. So those are the those are the major ones. Um, even if you get you know one article done or one small budget done, you know present it so we can just get it out of the way. So we're not trying to cram everything into the last two nights. Now, um, going into April, uh, go to Wednesday, April 15th. And I want everybody to put that on, on hold. We might meet on April 15th. Now the reason for that is um, we, we've got the governor's budget. So all those numbers are plugged in. Alan uh, Jones, uh, there at the end of the table, he's the guy who does all the budgets. So all your budgets go in, he fills in the finance committee report. Um, and he also has the revenues, the expenditures, everything that goes into the Finance Committee report, he's doing. So that's why he has that funny little machine in front of him. Uh, but the next time the state will give us some indication of local aid numbers, which is really what we're looking for, is when the House Ways and Means Committee reports. The House Ways and Means Committee reports the Wednesday before the vacation week, the Patriots vacation week. Um, so that should come out on the 15th. Invariably, it'll probably be pretty close to what the governor's numbers will be. Um, I don't anticipate, nobody anticipates, they'll be different. And we haven't had, the meeting, had this have, we haven't had to have this meeting um, in years. But just hold it there in case we do. You know, so if they do something really drastic and we need, need to make some major changes, um, we can meet that night, make the changes, and then uh, get ready to go to print. What I try to do is go to print like the Thursday or Friday, the 16th or the 17th. So we can get them to the town meeting members as early as we can. A lot of times by electronic means, we can get, to the, get them to the town meeting members who receive it electronically. 
uh, at least a week ahead of the first town meeting. <clears throat> and then we have the hard copy available for everybody else that, uh, uh, that Monday when town meeting begins. Uh, now, town meeting begins the 27th. Uh, we will meet from 7.30 to 8 o'clock in the Lions hearing room on the second floor of the town hall at 7.30 every night before town meeting. Now, 90% of the time, we will sit there and chat. Um, if, uh, if I absolutely know there's nothing that we're gonna be doing, then I'll, I'll email people and people who are not town meeting members you know, don't have to come in. But at least hold that from 7.30 in case something comes up that we need to deal with. Um, um, for example, uh, all the contracts are settled through 2021, through June 30th, 2021. There's only one contract still outstanding, and that's the patrolmen. Uh, the patrolmen have gone to binding arbitration. Uh, I, I, I talked to Sandy today. We don't expect to have anything before the end of town meeting. But if it does, that's when we're going to have to meet uh, to vote on that contract. Um, okay, we're going to try to have to have hearings. Now, uh, Annie's been meeting with the, uh, the, on all the committees and commissions, uh, recycling, conservation, it is a whole bunch of those. Uh, we generally, Liz sends out a notice to all of them, says, if you want the same money that you got last year, uh, just tell me and you don't have to come in. That's, you know, if they want the same money they got last year, we're fine. Uh, and we just vote that. Um, usually these committees and commissions just get peanuts. $2,000, $5,000 or something like that and give three times that more in the amount of work that they contribute. Uh, there is one exam uh, one committee though that we've heard to the last couple of times and that's the arts and culture uh, that Annie has been communicating with. And that, that's, uh, that got up to, I think we appropriated 35,000 for them last time. Mm -hmm. And I think most of the committee has, uh, do you have, Liz, did you yeah, they're, not, they're not asking for anything, to, no change for them. Okay. Uh, but still, most of the committee wants to hear them anyway. Oh, okay. uh, because uh, I think many of the committee felt that this is something that we're giving seed money to, but we don't want them to be a permanent reliant on, on the town government for this money. Um, so uh, Annie will coordinate with Liz uh, to see if they can come in and get that. Also, uh, later on this month, we uh, want the town manager to come back and give hearings on all his articles, not all his sort of non-regular articles that we have questions about. Uh, so that's the calendar. Mr. Yes, Charlie. Uh, two things. <clears throat> on the 17th, isn't that a holiday? The 17th. Yes. Yeah, it's President's Day. President's Day is a holiday. And the second thing is you have retirement down here. Uh, we haven't met. Why would we hear the retirement board before the subcommittee meets with the, okay. with the department? Actually, we weren't going to hear them. No, we're not. We had that on hold for them, so I wasn't sure if I should have completely taken that off. Because you said we'd Yeah, just take it off. It. Okay. Take it off. Usually, we'd hear from them if they had a different article, you know, than the, than the two standard ones. Uh, and this, they only have the regular two articles. So, um, um, I had already told them they don't have to come in, and you guys are going to meet with them. You're going to meet that day? No. Okay, so just cross off Monday the 17th. So the next meeting will be uh, next Wednesday uh, when we'll hear the water bodies um, and then anybody else that we need to. Okay, any other questions on the... Uh, Okay, uh, so that's the hearing for the calendar. Okay, warrants. So the last, not last year, but the couple years before that, we were down below 50 articles. And uh, now we have 82. So I called Marie and asked her if she could just arbitrarily shave 30 articles out, but she said she couldn't do that. So what I want to do now is go through the articles one by one 
and see if there's any articles that we want to have hearings on. Now, the selectman articles, which are the first articles, so they've you probably noticed they've made a change now. They have the selectman articles first, and then the redevelopment articles, and then the finance articles. And uh, they, uh, they had their reasons for it um, in doing that. But it's not our job to hear something because you know one or two people might think this is sort of interesting to hear. <coughs> you, if you're a town meeting member, you're going to hear it all then. It's only if it's going to have a substantial impact. Now, a zoning article could have a substantial financial impact. Uh, they usually don't, though. And it's rare that we ever want to hear zoning articles. Believe me, don't want to hear zoning articles. Uh, and then selectman articles, you know, if they're modifying a fee or some bylaw change, it's, uh, usually we let those pass. Um, if, if it's something that we think might have a significant impact, you know, then we'll invite them in to hear it. Financial impact. Financial, uh, severe financial impact. Okay, so well, Article 2, everybody have their things out. Article 2 yeah. is the state town address, <laughs> board of committees. Now I'm going to go through these and just read them. Um, so if, if you want to ask about that, you got to speak up. Um, appointment of measure of wooden bark, uh, election of assistant town moderator. So those are boilerplate, we get finished. Fin Bylaw regulation of outdoor lighting. Bylaw amendment, Minuteman bikeway hours. That should be interesting. Bylaw amendment, canine control fees and fines. Mr. Chairman, could yeah. we, I don't want to have a hearing on this, but could we ask the um, finance department subcommittee to get the total for like the small fees? Could we ask them to get what they are? So if someone asks what they are, we at least have a, a knowledgeable answer. Okay, so this is uh, to reduce late fees for dog registration from 50 to 25. So, uh, Peter, is that yours? That's mine. Oh, the uh, town clerk? Oh, you said finance. I think the treasurer's office would have the numbers the, the easiest. You mean what the total income is? Yeah, like what did we collect in these late fees? Oh, okay, so you want to hear dollar figures. I just want it, so if we're at town meeting and somebody asks us, okay. how many we collect? Okay, Charlie, collect? thank you. And that uh, was kind of nine as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then... Uh, no, did you want to hear how much uh, a resident has to pay, or did you want to hear what the I just want to hear how much the town collects. How much? Okay. So the, uh, Charlie will get that from the treasurer's office. Now, have you met? Have you met with the town clerk yet? Yes. Okay. Just for curiosity, could you just ask why they're ch reducing yeah, it? Reducing. Just give them a call and ask why. Reducing what? Reducing the uh, from fifty to twenty-five. It's, well, what is that question against? Okay, uh, canine control fees to see if the town will vote oh, to amend oh, oh, oh. to okay. reduce the late fees for dog license registration from 50 to 25. Unless somebody knows why. I was just curious. Okay, Peter, if you could just ask why Article 8, they're reducing the fee. Yeah, one of us, one of us will, right? Okay, great. I'll do that tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. And. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Yeah, try. No. no oh, um, on, on Article 7, do we know if this is going to require any additional town services like uh, police coverage or something like that? I think right now, does anybody know what the bikeway hours are? It closes at 9 p.m. I'm sorry? Close, in theory, it closes at 9 p.m. And then opens at like 6 or something? Yeah. Uh, so, my recollection of the hours is that the reason they set the hours is so that police patrol can ask someone to get off the bike path. Okay. I, I mean, effectively, if you're riding your bike home from Airline at 11 o'clock at night and you're not causing any other trouble and there's nothing going on, nobody's going to stop you. But if you're disorderly on the bike path at 9.30, then the cops can ask you to buzz off. That's why There's another, another reason that was <laughs> originally Mm -hmm. um, there were issue about lighting the bike path, mm -hmm. and <coughs> it's not lighted with the understanding that uh, it wouldn't be used at night. Yeah. 
That, that's why I'm sort of asking if there's a financial impact to this change. That was my question. Well, this is by uh, an Andrew McNeil and 10 registered voters. My guess, and all it is a guess, is they want it to close at 8 o'clock instead of 9 o'clock or something like that. Um, just to extend. Just to, to extend the operating hours. Extend the operating hours. Yeah. Okay, the opposite. There are probably bike riders who want to be able to use it later. Which is why the question of financial impact comes up. Well. Should we inquire the town manager whether he has concerns about financial impact? Okay. Maybe we could ask him whether or not he wants us to render an opinion and has an estimate. Okay, Article 7. Bike hours. Okay, so that'd be one of the questions we could ask the uh, manager when he comes in. So apparently, this bikeway is managed by four towns: Bedford, Lexington, Arlington, and Cambridge. So, yeah. how do we take a decision, or they take a decision, will depend upon the other towns as well, right? Well, we control our own bike path. Oh, I understand that. I'm yeah. just saying, what are the other towns doing? If there's already some precedence, then yeah. perhaps then there's something that's the basis of this. But anyways, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. So, we, you know, we just care if there's a financial impact yeah, from right. what, that's what, we what happens. Exactly. Okay, so we'll ask the manager when he comes in. Okay, and then uh, Article 9 is reduce fines for violations. Okay, so I'll tell you Article 9, why? It says in, in accordance with state law. It's, I'm sorry, you said? Um, on Article 9, it says in, in accordance with state law, oh. which implies that the state law changed. Okay, that's, uh, <laughs> that sounds like a reasonable answer. Still if all else fails, read directions. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> 10, street performance definitions. 11, stormwater management. Update and such bylaws, add, remove, or definitions. Clarify the procedures. That sounds pretty mechanical. 12. It says, excuse me. It says adjust fees. Yeah. Just fees. Pardon me, on, on Article 11. It does say adjust fees. So here's the financial impact. Again, probably just a question of the town manager. Yes. Okay. Just fees. Uh, 12. Fossil fuel infrastructure. Okay. You can thank Brookline for that. Right. Now, would, would 12 apply to municipal buildings? Of course, we're in the process of building a new one. Which will be all electric components as major renovation. Fossil fuel. Just provide for exemptions to saying <laughs> often applies to the town. Yeah. I just want to go and change the cost of the buildings. Well, we'd have to. So, it's a big question. I think this is a. Jim. Yes, Charlie. I, I'm not sure, but I, th doesn't this have. Uh, cost to the citizens and to the consumers. I mean, if you have a contractor or, or a developer that's going to build something, and um, you know they can put in a natural gas heating system for X Y Z, or they have to put in a uh, you know underground um, subterranean heating system with say tanks at four times the cost that has some impact I mean, I'm not sure if it's a I don't believe this affects electricity Charlie no, I'm thinking about developers yeah they're not required to be geothermal as the solution they can just do electric based for okay. so I'm thinking for example the DPW re you know, major rehabilitation project and we'll apply to that might have a cost impact I don't know why don't we ask the manager yeah. That about the impact on municipal right. buildings. Right. 
Okay. 13. Appropriation to... School Committee members. Do we need to take a vote on this? School budget presentation. Uh, well, it's not real. The simple answer is going to be they can do it, but they're going to take it out of their own budget. Yeah. If they'd like to steal money from kids, they should do it. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. But, yeah. Well, the school committee's not voting. So this isn't, no, the point is this isn't going, yeah, they are. This is no, the 10 registered voter article. No, in other words, like this would never be an outside warrant article every year. No, it this would be. School committee members would be paid to the school committee budget. Sure. And right. so if the school, if this was, whether it's approved, let's say this was approved, the school committee wanted to be paid, they would reduce another line item in their budget. Or, the or increase the budget. Well. That's an element that we control, but you know that's why it's set in the five-year plan. Uh, no, the big, I, the big issue I had, the big issue uh, concern, uh, was health insurance, and uh, so I had a long talk with uh, Doug Heim, our town council, on a couple times. Uh, it used to be in the old days. This was, this, you know, selectman is a selectman for like 30 years retires or gets defeated as selectman, go gets a state job for three years for, you know, fifty thousand dollars and then retires based upon thirty three years at fifty thousand dollars, your highest three years. Uh, but that was cut out, so you have to make at least five thousand dollars and be an elected official in order to uh, get in the state retirement system. And the uh, GIC, which is the state which is the system we do our insurance, health insurance through, mm -hmm. as stated, that unless you're in the retirement system, you don't qualify for retiree health, for employee health insurance. Mm -hmm. um, so if the town, the town meeting decides to pass this, um, and, the, and the school committee puts it in their budget, uh, then uh, it wouldn't affect health insurance. No it, unless, you, unless you are already have a retirement account, in other words, you've been a, for a long period of time and have set up a retirement and have been collecting, they're sort of grandfathered in, but new people wouldn't. So it would just be the 21,000 on that. And, and Doug Heim uh, said the same thing the other day. Yeah. Okay, 14. Now, just I mean, this sort of a technical question applies to this in water bodies. It, it has a, it's an article that has an absolute dollar amount in it. Suggest maybe they change the article, or is that too late? For that? Their article, I think it's too late at this point. Um, I've been telling people not to put dollar figures in their Warren articles for years, and uh, for some reason they keep ending up there. But um, okay, establishment of town committee. Mr. Mr. Chairman, I yes, have a question. Are, are, do we have the vote on this or not? I mean, it is a financial article, town meeting. No, but it doesn't require an appropriation. You can hear it during the school budget. Okay. I'm sorry? We will cover it during the school budget. Because I think the easiest thing to do is ask the school committee what if they want it. They have to take 21000 from some other place in right. their budget. Yes. Do you, th do you think the school committee uh, will support this? It would be interesting. I don't think they like the optics. Yeah. But it doesn't require an appropriation, so I think it falls under or under the policy areas. And unless the school committee asks for twenty-one thousand dollars in addition to cover it. No. <coughs> in that case, yeah, well, yeah, consistent with an annual stipend, um, but there's no appropriation in it. So even though the titles. <laughs> Uh, right, but I'm just going to ask them if they could take appropriation out of that title. Well, just so they don't get confused. Okay, 14, 
establishment of town committee on residential development. Fifteen, establishment uh, town committee on auto and property insurance claims and losses. Okay. Sixteen, establishment of police civilian advisory board study committee. So this is not to establish a board, but establishing a study committee. Okay. That should be interesting. Seventeen, uh, update vision 2020. 18, acceptance of legislation, municipal affording housing trust fund. Well, I guess my only concern is where would the money come from? Exactly. I wonder if it's covered in Article 25. Okay. Okay, well, that's where the money's coming from. So do we need to hear it if we know where the money's coming from? Do we need to hear it if we know where the money's coming from? If it didn't say where the money's coming from, it might be a good idea. But it did say. Yeah. It's yeah, see, I. Federal fund appropriation. Right. So it's not us. Affordable Housing Trust Fund. Mm -hmm. Affordable Housing Trust Fund. They should have put those two articles together. Eighteen and twenty-five. Okay. Now remember, I'm going to keep going unless somebody says, "No, let's hear that." Okay. 19, Election Modernization Committee. 20, Home Rule Legislation, Justin Brown. I thought we had stopped doing this. Maybe not. Okay. 21. Mr. Chairman, do we want, I don't think we want you to hear this, but haven't we historically put a rider on this, for lack of a better way to put it, and I can't recall what you attached to it before. Yeah, there we have some heard flaw one. in this appointment mechanism that we had identified several years ago. And when we would put the article before the town meeting, we would attach something to it. And I can't remember what it was. I think we would mention the person's name. That was the, the other, the old going back, it, it was nameless. So it was almost like it was open for anybody going forward. Mm -hmm. I think when they when they when they did this particular article now, with it mention the person's name, it's only for that person. Yeah, there was something I thought with either pension credits or health care or... Yeah, there was something that they did. And then I thought the selectmen... Now, of course, keep in mind anybody can put an article before a town meeting if they get 10 registered votes. Mm -hmm. So I could ask the selectmen what their... Or I could ask Marie <laughs> or the manager what their intention is. For the new people, the, the, the problem is, the, what's the law now for uh, 32? Mm -hmm. And the purpose was that if you train somebody, you're going to get a long period of time from them before they retire at 55. Um, and younger men and women have fewer accidents than older men and women. Um, and so you hire somebody who's 48 years old you know, they go out the, the next day, get, get hit in an accident, they go out on disability, and you've got virtually no use from all the expenditure of cash. So that's sort of the reason why it's a 32 age thing. Uh, and it stops at 31. It stops at 31. Yeah. To be a firefighter or a policeman, it's 19 to 31. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Okay, I will check that out.
Home Rule Legislation, Consolidation of Town Meeting Member Elections. I thought this was sort of an interesting thing to do, but we'll see how it involves. 22, <coughs> Ranked Choice Voting. Uh, I don't know if there'd be a cost. I mean, a paper cost. It would be fairly trivial. My concern is the minute you start making elections more com complex, uh, things. I don't think it's a good thing. Could be a software change cost. I'm sorry. It could be a software change cost. Yeah. We might want to ask the clerk. That if our current software and system can handle this, if not, we probably be paying for something new. I'm not sure the Rizzo software is. Well, well, the voting machine is. Voting machine. Machine. Which we have they do tally in a certain yeah. way. Yeah. They would have to tally in a different way. I think you have to ask whoever is procuring the new voting machines. I don't know if the clerk's office would actually really answer the question. I would just also offer there's a ballot initiative, I think, to implement ranked choice voting. I think mm -hmm. it's the legislature right now. Mm -hmm. So well, if the voting the machines come through the selectors office. Right, that's what I'm saying. I, I can't hear you sometimes. Well, we, I'm sorry, <laughs> I've heard that a lot. Um, we need to ask the selectors office what they know about this relative to the new machines they're purchasing. Does that make sense? They're already planning to purchase new machines. Yes. They are already planning to purchase new machines. I believe they've selected them. And so we just need to know what their answer to that question is. You know, we've got three articles here from the Election Modernization <laughs> Committee. Yep. The ranked choice, the uh, 21, I don't think is all that controversial, and uh, 19. 19. Mm -hmm. Can we have them come in and talk? I don't think we need them I, for. I don't think they'll know anything about the financial aspects. Well, they're better. They're presenting it. I no, I, I don't think they're thinking about the money. As I said, I think that if we are concerned that the voting technology will be able to handle the change in how, what we're asking people to put on the ballot, we should ask the selectman's office whether or not they know does the technology we're about to implement handle this. Well, who's on the election modernization committee? Is the selectman's office on there? Uh, Not at this point, no. Do you know who is, David? Uh, uh, the assistant town moderator. His name is Jim Connor. John Con Jim Connor. He's, I believe he's the chairperson. They were looking for more individuals to participate. Originally, under the town, what town meeting passed, there was a representative from the, the selectman's office, a non-voting member. And there was a conflict because people felt why should I have to go to all these meetings when I have no say except to sit there? So there was a conflict. So I believe they want to change that in one of these bylaws to allow people that are on the to have full voting rights. So that there's been a conflict over that. From what I understand. Okay, so let's see. Okay, so 19, 19 is nineteen is not that big a deal. Twenty one is not a big deal. Um, Ranked choice voting. Okay, uh, Annie, since you were. Sure. Uh, by the way, just as a warning to new people, if, if somebody shows a great deal of enthusiasm and really is interested in this, I consider that voluntary to follow through. So, Annie, if you could check and get as much information on yes. 22 as you can, I'd appreciate it. Okay, 23, legislation, financial estimates. Budget documents. Now, this one I have a big concern about. Mm -hmm. And I've expressed that to the manager. And uh, tell you what, let me. Apparently, it was one of the selectmen, because the manager comes before the selectmen on January 15th or 16th mm -hmm. or something like that, presents the whole budget with the caveat that. Um, of course, the governor's numbers come out at the end of the month, and they could be adjustments. And one of the selectmen, um, well, why don't we just delay this whole process until February 1st so you could have final numbers 
and present it to us the next week. Well, of course, that cuts down, that knocks out about two or three weeks of finance committee time to get this done. Um, so uh, I, I would like, um, so I'm gonna call the selectmen uh, who proposed this and see if I can get them to, to back off uh, on this. I won't say who it was. It was a former finance committee member from. <laughs> Oh, that narrows the question. I was going to say, well, we'll still have to two. Oh, my God. <laughs> I think I know which one. Yeah. No. <laughs> I just narrowed that. Okay. Um, home rule legislation, senior water discount. Home rule legislation, real estate transfer. That's tied to that. Um, do, do we not usually hear things about water discounts because that's enterprise fund and how does this balance or what's our view on, on that? Well, what usually what would happen is if a certain number of people got a discount because they're old, uh, everybody else who's young would pay, pay it so it's a wash right. yeah. as, far as, the, as far as the department is concerned. <coughs> um, authorize and request the select board to file home rule legislation. Um, so I assume they know that. Um, the real estate transfer tax. Uh, retired police officers to details. I'd like to hear that. Okay. okay. Yeah. There wouldn't really be a financial impact Okay. Okay. I'm gonna. We'll have. Uh, about that. I'm sorry. If I could say something as far as financial impact, uh, I don't know if everybody knows that when a police officer works at outside detail, the town in addition gets 10 percent. They charge a 10 percent fee to that police officer who works at outside detail. They do not charge it if the officer works at town detail. Town DG would be like work public works or covering a town meeting, something like that. It's an outside detail. Uh, the state allows municipalities to collect up to ten percent of the total cost of the detail. Now, if you don't, yeah. Now, if you don't have enough Arlington police officers who are willing or able to do the detail, they go out of town. They do now. Uh, they, they have agreements now. All some communities allow it, and some communities don't. The town of Arlington has agreements with other communities. As far as, to my knowledge, Tularica, Watertown, so, so, so you'll see other offices. Yeah. But if that's a two-way street. So this would be an effort, probably, rather than to go out of town, to be able to hire their own retired people. Yes, but if, if, if you took if you read this proposal, yeah. you're limited on on, on what how, what retirees could could do this. If you're 65 years of age and older, according to this this proposed by, bylaw, you can't do it. So it's only between 55 and 65. It's, it's yeah, it's uh, that's okay. When the manager comes in, we'll ask if there's a financial what, uh, if he sees any kind of negative financial impact. Okay, uh, twenty seven. Okay, now we're into zoning. Um, conversion of commercial definition of foundation. I was hoping we wouldn't have any zoning articles this time, but <laughs> that was not to be. Zoning, residential, sustainability. Okay. 
Okay, I don't see anything there. What about the parking stuff? 34, 35. Of parking requirements in B. All of these zoning bylaw changes are can register voter articles. Right. The redevelopment board not decided not to submit them. They wanted to work more on some of their articles. So um, other people who have Thirty-four and thirty-five. Yeah. <laughs> like especially in support of the new club. Yeah, right. There was a holdup. That, uh, there were Balixes up in the Heights. They cried when that place closed. But, yeah. but when Balix closed, there's a pub. That, I guess a, there's a Winchester pub, and they're going to open another one, and one to open one where Balix is. But there's no parking. There's no outside parking right, on it. And that's holding up the Zoning Board of Appeals from approving it. And uh, to my knowledge, the only restaurant in town that has their own parking is uh, Jimmy's. Yeah. I don't know of any others that has their own private parking. Scootra. Well, yeah, Scootra. That's right, Scootra. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, also shared. Yeah, sharing with a, lot of with a lot of that. So I think that's what that's all about. Mm -hmm. Uh, is this money going to be in the zone or in support of the any So unless anybody, wow, a lot of them. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, uh, this is all going to have to go before the redevelopment board. Oh, no, Dean? Sorry, I'll wait. I'll wait. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I'll wait. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay, so let's get on to Article 47. That is Finance Committee. So yeah. Carolyn will work on that. Collective bargaining. Yeah. Uh, um, Well, there's only one union out, as I mentioned, and uh, we'll have to appro appropriate, like we did last year, appropriate a sum of money to be used in, in future town meetings. But we, be, because it's not in the budget, because we don't have a, an agreement, we have to set aside money to pay for it when they do get it settled. So we'll have to do that the same as we did last year. Um, and uh, we can ask the manager if there's any updates, Article 48. Uh, now, Article 49 and 50 are selectman articles. OK, 51 is uh, parking benefits, so that'll be ours. Uh, we can ask. Okay, so 51 uh, parking. Ask the manager about parking because they'll present a budget to us uh, that we'll have to put in there. Okay, budgets will here. Capital budget, we've already got them set up for uh, March 4th, so they're coming in. And rescission of prior articles, that'll be from the Capital Budget Committee. Uh, bond premiums, that should be from the Capital Budget Committee also, or the Town Treasurer. One of those two. Charlie, well, this is, I think the Capital Budget she'll is... Be, she'll be there. Okay. Um, appropriation Transportation Infrastructure Fund, so that'll be the manager. fund and peg this was an article that we started last year for uh, public access it used to be that the funds coming in from the cable fund that we get uh, would just go right to the cable access and we didn't have to deal with it but the Department of Revenue Division of Local Services, which is sort of our regulatory body, 
uh, decided that this money really needs to get appropriated. So now with this article, we'll appropriate, we'll find out how much money came in and then we'll appropriate it back to them. So that's what that is about. We'll hear that from the manager. Uh, water and sewer. Okay, Minuteman, is that all set, Penny? <coughs> it, uh, yes, um, I will meet with them before they meet with us and we will meet with them on March 9th. Okay, and uh, again remind him that we'd like to get the budget presentation uh, a week ahead of time. Yes. Okay. Sure. Yes. So uh, <coughs> can we also ask him to bring uh, some documents that separate the operating budget from the impact of the increased um, debt expenditures. Can okay, we, any? Excluded debt. Okay. Um, okay, the school committee and Dean, if you could remind them that we, the superintendent, we'd like to have the budget about a week ahead of time. Okay. okay. And CPC. Um, Liz, could you touch bases with the chair of the Community Preservation Act and say that, ask that if we could have their budget, their presentation materials a week ahead of time. There's a little, you know, at least a few days ahead of time. Uh, CPC, okay. Okay, so the uh, committees and commissions so Liz, you know, all, all those ones that we appropriate money for, see, you know, you probably have to beat on some of them, especially yeah. Historic Commission. Um, have you listed the ones I've contacted that have no action on them, but I will... Um, we just want to hear back from email, them. Yeah, so they don't all of a sudden pop up in front of town meeting and say, Finance Committee never gave you any chance to talk to them. So they don't all of a sudden pop up in front of town meeting and say, Finance Committee never gave me a chance to... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I want to email or a voicemail or something from them. Okay, and we'll hear the... Uh, Arts and culture. Okay, Article 62. Those should be in the budget. Okay. Appropriation miscellaneous, those should be in the budget. And the water bodies fund. Okay, so we're hearing then from the 19th. Um, Liz, could you let, ask them if they could um, email the materials to us uh, a few days ahead of time? Well, probably if they could get it to us like by Friday, because they're coming in next Wednesday. Theirs is usually just a big simple spreadsheet, so. Okay, water bodies set, Preser community preservation plan. So we're hearing them on the yeah. appropriation community preservation fund. Okay, so we got two articles for them. Okay, appropriation Harry Barber. Did you hear from them, Liz? Oh, um, that position, I believe, is vacant. Council on Aging? Okay. Who's meeting? Who, uh, you meeting with the Council on Aging? Um, well, we'll meet with Christine. Okay. And Tell you what, could you just give them a call um, and see if they want the same $7,500? Okay. Just, you know, a quick call on that. Charlie? Yeah, uh, if, I, if I might, I just wanted to comment that on Article 65 and 66, these, you know, while they're here, we're not a uh, approving body for the Community Preservation Act. 
Um, it's a sort of a uh, endorsement as opposed to yeah the right. Program. Yeah, uh, Charlie made a good point. The uh, community, there's there's three groups that have traditionally reported to town meeting: the redevelopment board, the selectmen, and the finance committee. Um, the community preservation is a fourth, so they have the, the direct access to the town meeting. So the the selectmen and the finance committee people are not they're endorsing it as opposed to re approving it. Um, it. It's it's a little bit different, but. Uh, uh, keeps them honest when they know they have to come before for us. Okay, so Mary Margaret, you'll confirm the 7,500. Because mm -hmm. uh, what I'd like to do next week is go through an action. You know, if we have an hour spare or something, just go through and vote articles <laughs> that we already know about. Um, the Harry Barber program is where. Um, uh, older people, I, I'm always careful about that these days, uh, who uh, rent can uh, work up to a certain number of hours and get a certain amount of money that they can actually, I think they can use it for whatever they want. But when the uh, program originally came up, or people started doing it, it was only for home owners, people who owned real estate. And the finance committee actually was the group back in the 80s, I think, who said, well, how about renters? You know, why shouldn't they get some help? Uh, so this is sort of our baby to a certain degree. OK, appropriation bike share infrastructure. That's actually in the budget for $100,000, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yes, Charlie. So <clears throat> this is um, something I think, I, I, I don't want to speak for the Capital Planning Committee here, but I think it was rejected by the Capital Planning Committee, or at least it wasn't endorsed. And it's, it was contentious because. Um, Kelly, can you speak up? I'm sorry. Um, this was a, a subject I think that was uh, discussed at the Capital Planning Committee, and and uh, was not supported. And the issue is that it's um, it's paying for some infrastructure to, to store bikes, but um, it's only for one company. The town mm -hmm. doesn't make any money on it, so, so I, I think this is something the Finance Committee should review. So developing a bike share infrastructure. So this is basically bike racks? Specialized bike racks for one company. Buying their equipment, putting it in the town. Yeah. Now the budget actually says blue bikes, right? $100,000. That's funny because, don't, for example, I go over into Somerville and there's whole bike racks there, uh, like right off Mass Ave, going down the bike path to Davis. This whole bike racks there. I always assumed that the company, uh, uh, those are company bike racks, not the city of Cambridge or Somerville. Do you? I, I, I don't know what, what racks are there. I mean, I don't know yeah. whether they're blue or green or whatever. I think the, the issue is that we had green bikes and they have uh, gotten out of the, the, I can't remember, it might be Lyft. Line bikes. Line, line bikes. Line bikes. Line bikes. Oh. It, it might have been owned by Lyft, I'm not sure. But they, have exited the bike business and got into the scooter business. Oh. So the uh, the other provider of bikes, whoever it is, has come up with a program but you have to pay to get in. Okay, so I have that for Article 68, bike infrastructure for the manager. And Alan, you said it was 100,000? 100,000, yeah. Why did I remember when, when Lime came in, there was some debates, and, and you know, one of the requirements of new likes was that the town would get some skin on the game. And I think that's what this is. The thing that impacted me about the Lime bikes is they were like litter. Yeah. People would just leave them all over the place. But uh, so, um, what were some of the reasons that the Capital Budget Committee was? Uh, because it was financing a private corporation. Yeah. And the town wasn't getting any return on it. Who would own the racks? The, the company. Okay. My well, is, I, I'm not sure. I can't, I can't recall exactly. Yeah. Okay. We'll ask the manager about that. 69 is OPEP. Uh, so 69 and 70. We'll wait for the, your yeah. 
group to get back to us. Uh, for, for the new people, uh, 69 is uh, OPEB is other post-employment benefits. Um, the town has been funding those for probably 20 years now. I'm not sure how much money is in there, but it's got to be 12, 15 million. Um, Can we get a report on how much money we have and how it stacks up against the liability? Yes, we can. It's in the actual, it's in, in the uh, auditor's, auditor's report that came out about a month ago. It, it is substantial, but not in terms of the liability. No, no, I, I know it's not substantial compared to the liability, but, you know, we've always said the thing we fear is the day that we're told we have to fund it for right. the way we're funding the pension system, and then we'll have a minimum amount we've got to contribute. And so it'd be nice to know how bad the hit would be if we got stuck with that. We'll have that. Okay, so the uh, fiscal 19 audit is, is uh, on the town website, do you know if that? I, I believe it is, yeah. Okay. I think we all got a copy of it. The audit? Yeah. Did, did it come an email? Yeah. Okay, I'll check that email. At least a month ago. Anybody else get copies of the audit by email? Because I don't remember. Okay, well. Okay. I, I went to the, the audit meeting and you know, the, the, all the papers were out and then there were some mistakes so they didn't ask for all the papers back. Okay, that was what, January, wasn't it? Okay. Um, so it's on the website, you're interested in the website? Got it. Yeah, so we can check the website. Or else I'll have to, I'll ask to have it emailed. On the website, they just need to email a link. Okay. Okay. Uh, and 70 is for um, people who retire and then over a long period of time because when you retire, only the first day 15,000 of your pension gets an increase each year. And so, um, uh, if, if you're retired over a long period of time, the person who has your job now, their salary has gone up much faster than your retirement. <laughs> and Article 70 basically is there to prevent you from going below 50% of what your position is. Um, with a caveat that uh, um, this is not a, uh, there's certain restrictions uh, before a certain time. Okay. Uh, Local option taxes, overlay reserve, use of free cash. So we can vote on a lot of this stuff at the next meeting. Long-term stabilization, fiscal policy, yeah, we can. Okay, and then we have resolutions. Lots of resolutions. Now, resolution has no legal binding effect. Usually they're sort of national issues or something like that. Um, it's 
since they have no legal effect to select them, put them at the end. Uh, I'm not sure there's anything there that has a significant financial impact. burning desire to hear stuff on resolutions? Nope. Okay. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve articles for the manager. So I'm going to, uh, Liz, I'll call the manager and uh, <coughs> see if I can get him in for the, uh, oh. No, water bodies. Well, I'll see if he's available for the 19th. But he'll just have to come later. Okay, well, I'll see what I can do. Um, on that. Okay. Now, are there any budgets I'm ready for Dean? I found my answer to Article 20. We'll go back to Article 20 for a moment. Okay, Article. Yes. So prior to 2010, the then Board of Selectmen would vote favorable action on these articles. They would send them to town meeting as open authorizations. So there was no time limit on it. So oh. you received a permanent waiver. And so you could have been 33 years old. You could now take the test until the day you can retire. In 2010, the Finance Committee said, wait a sec. You can't allow an open-ended authorization. And so we requested them, still that Board of Selectmen, to put an end to these. So you get, and in 2010, they allowed the person to have one exam in appointment cycle, which might be two years or whatever it is. But then it closed. If they wanted to continue, they had to come back again. But we stopped <coughs> it from being, you are now away from this statute, you know, until you're out, as long as you're out, as long as you're working age. Yep, okay, that made sense. Um, yeah, so no, we did have to make sure that the article that goes before, right. they have to put, if they go back to like 2007, 8, 9, they're going to put the open-ended article in. Right. They approve it. If they go to 2010, they're going to put the closed-ended article in. It. So I think the Finance Committee would want the 2010 language that was closed-ended and stipulated that the person was eligible for two, 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 two so she'll be eligible for one consideration for appointment to the position of firefighter in the town of Arlington when his name appears on the next certification list for the position. So that was in the 2010 annual town meeting? Yes. What article? It is, um, it was article, it's on the prior page of course, right center. Article 23. Receiving favorable action from four out of five members of the board at that time. I won't tell you that he voted no. Yes, you will. <laughs> <laughs> As a point of honor, I would like to point out that while I was on the board of select, when none of these articles came to town meeting and uh, uh, anonymous, uh, I know. by consensus, unanimously, I'm sorry. Excuse me, so flustered. <laughs> okay, good. I'll, uh, I'll talk to the selectman about that. I haven't seen any of these in years. Nope. So after we put this, I went and I continued through. After we put this one cycle in, and I don't remember, I, I don't think it's one year, I think. Yeah, how long is an exam cycle for the exam? For the exam? Two years? It, 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 yeah, it varies. Sometimes 
on average every two years, sometimes every three years. Yeah. So once we put these in, they kind of all, they, they fluttered off real quick because it wasn't. Okay, good, thank you. Uh, are there any budgets to present tonight? The library. You have? The library. Okay, great. She got her hand up first, Ed. <laughs> <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> I wasn't waiting. Okay, um, I'm sorry? A lot of the, the, um, the salaries increases have more to do with a number of people getting step increases. Plus, so the cost of living next year, if I remember correctly, that was a 1%. <coughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so 1% plus steps. Okay. Um, and 1% is in the step. No, the 1% would be your cost of living. <coughs> I think it's built into the steps. No, the, two well, separate things. <coughs> yeah. I know they're separate things. But that, that also includes, uh, if you go down to uh, about three quarters of the way down in the uh, personnel, uh, there's a new Fox librarian. Uh, They need a full-time librarian as well as a <coughs> at the box. The, the one of all, the, down where that vacancy is, mm -hmm. uh, hire some, somebody for the box. So, Okay, I'm sorry, so what is the title we're looking at? They need a head librarian. They haven't hired one yet, but they need a head librarian um, at the box. Right now they have um, one person who works part-time, and then they want to have other librarian who works full-time. I'm trying to see what line that's on. Uh, that's uh, Troja, T R O H A, that line right there. I'm sorry, John. Troja, three quarters of the way down. T O R N A S? T R O H A. It's at the, the bottom quarter. There's a vacant, and then there's. Well, it's too little for me to read. And then Alexander and then Troja. In a previous column where it says next to Waring or the, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, where it says branch librarian. Yeah. Yeah. Waring is the left and they will uh, we want a new librarian. Uh, actually Troja has been there. 
uh, last year, but and then from last year, but uh, uh, wearing left and uh, Troha has been there for uh, <coughs> uh, was there last year, but then they want to hire somebody for the Fox, which is the where uh, Coleman is there. Yeah, but they have they have a part time person. <coughs> they want to make a have a full time librarian, but start him or her at the you know the entrance stuff. Okay, I mean I just see somebody going from sixty seven thousand to seventy thousand. We were the wearing wine. So where's somebody going from, or where's the position going from part-time to full-time? Um, yeah, that's the vacant. Mm -hmm. The vacant Coleman? Yeah. All right, so they have a seven hour per week child librarian for the Fox. Um, the total annual salary for a full-time children's librarian position at the minimum step is 52000 They have now um, funding a part-time for 39366 so that $39,000 is what is needed to add on to get to a full-time. So it looks like, Al, if you look at the fiscal 2020 budget book for that line, it's 12631 and 21 is 53790 so that's for the so is somebody going from part time to full time? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, twelve six thirty one was too Okay, and then it looks like you've got a new uh, children's librarian. They have to hire one. Hire a Okay, but it, right. it's not in the budget book, it's a blank for the budget book, and then it goes to twenty one nine twelve. So are those the two? Well, they don't have an, they haven't hired the person. They're just putting the money in to hire a full-time librarian. So that what they have is they want to hire the person at fifty-two thousand five thirty-six. They have the thirty-nine thousand three sixty-six for the from the part-time, and so they will just add the difference to make it okay. full-time. Okay. And then it works down below third from the bottom, like the, there was no, there was a O'Connell. See, it's blank for 2020, and then 21,912 for 21. So it looks like they're promoting, they're increasing one position and adding an, a new part-time position. Well, ultimately, at the Children's Library, they want to have one full-time and a part-time. They don't have a full-time person right now. Okay. So that's going to be the Col well, previous, now it's vacant. Mm -hmm. And then they're going to make... Uh, so it looks like Capital is replacing Coleman, basically. Mm -hmm. Is a new position, right? Because the, okay. the new full time would that be a children's librarian or head librarian? No, a children's librarian at Fox. Right. Okay, so everybody yes. else is either is getting steps or one percent, <laughs> and or one percent. <laughs> and this is all with the Fox. budget itself, just um, if people were wondering what books and materials were, 
a lot of that was um, offset to the Minuteman Library Network for digital content, which was $146,000. I'm sorry, okay. If you look in the um, library expenses, mm -hmm. Yeah, 5227 books and materials is <coughs> the offset to the Minuteman Library Network. Um, you wanted to know what tech supplies were, that's the technology. Um, I have a question. Yeah. Why, why does the heating fuel go down? Okay, we asked that too. Um, I think that she had to make an. Um, an estimate, and then based on previous year and afterwards, they realized that it was not that. She was asked to put it in oh, that I way. See. Yeah, she's put and the real number. Next year, so it's a more real number. So the current use is 7,253 to date, in case you wanted to use that to measure. So the 30,000 one is. It was just a bad estimate. Right. Yeah. Well, to, to get them to 3.4%, they had to, <laughs> with the personnel increases, they had to cut expenses, so they figured out the right place to go. Um, All right, Margaret, could you say again what the extra books and materials are? Uh, books and materials. They're offsets to the Minuteman Library Network. Oh, 5227. So is that like a fee we pay to be involved in the process? Yes. It's the digital content fee. The fee we pay to the Minuteman Library System, is that what you said? Yes. Thank you. Okay. So everybody pays in here so that we get use of a number of things. Other questions? Um, And the tech supplies is the technology that um, it's things like the toner for the staff printers and things like that. Uh, let's see what else is there. Anyway, I just wanted to talk a little bit about some of the things they've accomplished. Um, they went fine free. We talked about that last time. And because they've done that, they got a lot of publicity. WBUR and um, the different libraries and on Facebook and uh, Forbes. There's also an article in Forbes about the library going free. Um, let's see. All right, you talked about. The, there are a lot of increases in the circulation and hours at the Fox Library now. A lot of people are using that, um, using that library, which is why they need to have someone more it's, full time. Circulation is triple over the last 10 years. So. Circulation? Yeah. Um, so during the, the school, uh, um, school year, the Fox Library is now open 40 hours a week. The, um, Little Fox Shop is operating and generating like a couple thousand dollars a month for them. And there are also um, it's the sixth largest library in circulation in the state. Not the Fox, the overall. Last year, they um, they did reinstate a full time librarian. Um, they have a head of team services. They now have weekend hours at the Fox and weekend hours at the Robbins. Um, for the 
for the renovation. Build, yeah, building out the two libraries. But that'll be presented in the capital plan, so we're not going to really say anything. So are you recommending this printed? Um, I am. I just wanted to see if there's anything else. I mean, she talked about in general a number of things. I mean, the library has a lot of public events down in the community room. It's used constantly by people for, it has a lot to offer um, in all kinds of, you know, spaces and rooms and librarians who specialize in different age groups and different technologies. I don't, okay. I don't know what else to say. Does anybody have any questions? Oh, we did ask, oh, I'm sorry. Finish what you were saying. So we did ask about that, um, remember that DX session of um, the photographs? They're still in the process of doing that. In case you're wondering what happened to all those Oh, those prints. Yeah. They were trying to get rid of. Yeah, they're still being um, assessed for value and Figuring out how to, how to, what to do with them. I think I saw some that basically said, "Remember that print you really love? Just come and take it." <laughs> well, they, just, I mean, they do have value. It's just yeah. establishing that value and then establishing so, someone who wants to pay that. Value. I remember town meeting. They were sort of said that the valuations were so low that the dumpster was cheaper. Right. So, so I think they don't want to they're them. still working on it, but trying not to take up too much time doing. It. Uh, questions, Charlie. Uh, yeah, thank you. <coughs> so that answered one of my questions, which was about the print, uh, the the accession, the accession. Um, I was a little confused, Mayor Margaret, about the uh, books and materials. Mm -hmm. Is that whole amount the the uh, the uh, Minuteman, or is that a portion of that Minuteman? In other words, if if that's all going to Minuteman, how do we acquire new books? Did you mean just the increase was for Minuteman's increased cost? Um, the I 10, think it's, No, because I think it's books and materials, but a larger part of it is the offsets to the Minuteman Library Network. That okay. includes that. Was that $10,000 increase, though, primarily because of the Minuteman cost increase? I can't say that. It could be all the things that that covers, not just Minuteman. But I can ask for that. Yeah, because you, you, I got the sense from what you said that was the ten thousand was Minuteman's sole cost, but it doesn't sound like that's so. Out of the two hundred thousand, how much do we pay Minuteman? Okay. Um, one hundred forty-six thousand. I wrote down. Real to Minuteman, really? I can't believe. Okay, well, I will ask her again. I mean, that, that would be, how much, do, how much do we pay to to use the Minuteman system? That our, if we can't get a bill here, we can get it someplace else. Right, but we do, I mean, we use the Minuteman system for a lot of things. Well, how much does that cost us? Well, I'll ask her if it's more than 146. Okay, so you'll find out how much of that two hundred thousand mm -hmm. goes to Minuteman. Yes. Because we got to provide, you know, got to buy our own books and magazines, and I assume that okay. comes from that category. Right. Okay. Okay, Charlie, did you have other questions? No, that's all. Thank you very much. Okay, so you'll get back to us on that. Yeah. Are there any other questions? Okay, so uh, you're recommending the budget is printed two million five eighty three eight oh seven uh, cost. Is that your motion? Yes. Second. Is there a second? Okay. Um, sometimes we'll pa we'll pass these, knowing we'll have a couple of questions. We'll get yeah. back to us afterwards. Are there any other questions? So I can ask them all at once. Okay. I have a quick question. Um, okay, Bill. How come they went uh, um, uh, 
free of uh, you know, buying free buying, buying because free. they found that people were just not returning the books. And this way, without the fines, people don't have to worry if they're a little bit late. And it encourages more use of the library. And um, there has not been. Is this new? Uh, is this fairly new? Because they, 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 they've been doing it for a year. They're not the only library in the system or in the country that does that. What if somebody's it. really late? I mean, like, you know, late would be late like a month or two months. Or That's okay. You got control. They have, they're more likely to get the books back having it gone free. Alan, is, is there, a, if, if a book doesn't come back within a year or something, is there a penalty they go after it? Or just I don't just think so. <clears throat> I guess people who go to libraries to get books don't steal them. Right. Well, what happens a lot of times, particularly with the children's books, the children lose them in, ha in the house temporarily or whatever. And yeah. Dean? So it doesn't affect the vote mirror markers, but just for. Um, management purposes so they don't think they have the, a different budget number. The Fox offset <coughs> on the top half of the book uh -huh. is correct. It's a credit that reduces the overall budget. Right. On the bottom half of the book, when you down to the Fox <laughs> offset for the current year, mm -hmm. it's not, it's a debit, which is adding to their budget, which is wrong. So okay. um, they don't actually get that 25, 200. Right. It actually comes right. out. So if she's looking at it, she can't go off of that bottom number. Personal spreadsheet and house spreadsheet rarely Okay. Okay, the motion. I mean, the data of the business of the rarely Yeah, just don't worry. They should have done it. Two and twenty nine. That's what the end. Okay. You. Okay, the motion has been made and seconded for two million five eighty three eight oh seven for the library. Are there any other questions or discussion? No. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Okay. Unanimous, favorable action, 210. Okay, Mary Margaret, do you have any other budgets? No. Okay. Um, David. Thank you. Um, can we turn to page 16 and 17 of our finance committee budget? to our chairman for an explanation on expenditures. Okay. I, I'm making a recommendation to the uh, the finance committee on our salaries. Um, the uh, rank and file, the backbenchers, if I will, get $50 per year. Mm -hmm. The vice chairman and the recording secretary get um, 450, and the chairman gets 650. Now, since we reduce the backbenchers, I'll use that term, from $100 to $50, oh, so back in the 1990s, no person coming on the committee since then has ever accepted the 50 bucks. I, I think one or two people might have gone up, saw the paperwork they had to fill out, and said, forget it. It's not worth it. Not only that, you get your $50 and they take like two bucks out for your pension. I'm sorry? They take out four and then they take 18 as a fee. Right, so they take out $4 and they put it into a retirement account for you. But the system the treasurer got it's gone. before Dean. Not this one. Not right. this one. Right, right, right. Before me. Before him. Set up a new system where they move, I think it was from ICMA to a new uh, company. And they charge $18 annually fee for each account. So each year you put in four bucks and they take out 18. <laughs> so, you know, if you get 50 bucks, now the vice chair and the chair usually put in enough money to cover the 18. So they're, they're sort of holding steady on what small retirement account they have. <laughs> now, I think receiving a certain amount of money um, is a certain validation. Um, we've sometimes talked about the selectmen 
uh, in the amount of work they do, and obviously they're going to be the town meeting. We'll be talking about the school committee, um, and such that. Um, and, and having been your chairman for 25 years, as I announced last June, this will be my last year. I figure I could uh, make this recommendation uh, without being in a conflict of interest. Uh, I think it would be better to move the chairman up, starting next year, uh, to $1,000. Selectmen get three thousand, but they're meeting. You know, there's more meetings. They're meeting all year round, um, and the assessors meet all year round in in meetings. So it's it's a little bit more limited, but I think a thousand dollars would be reasonable. And you know, you get to the end of June, you've been busting your butt for the last several months, and you get a real piece of money. Uh, might even be able to have a dinner at Jimmy's or something. Um, and then to move the vice chair and the recording secretary uh, up to uh, $500 I'd recommend for the vice chair and $550 for the recording secretary. Uh, and that's the same amount of money that we appropriate now. So in other words, it had still come to $3,050. So we're not changing the amount we're doing. We're just uh, moving it so uh, the chair, the three vice chairs, the recording secretary gets some more money uh, and uh, nobody's losing any money except for two people, uh, both of whom I have talked to. Uh, one of them complained it messes up his taxes uh, in doing that, and the other doesn't care. So I, both of the people who get the $15 now don't care. So I think it would make more sense you'd be paying uh, five people instead of 21. Um, it will have no impact on the uh, executive secretary. Uh, but it would seem to make a little bit more sense. Um, so I, I've asked Doug Heim to see if there's anything in any official documents that set the Finance Committee salary. It's not in the bylaws. It's not in the Town Manager Act. It's, I think we just decided. And uh, when we reduced it if, uh, back in 1990, um, we just made a vote. I notified per, uh, the uh, payroll, and that was it. Um, so it keeps the money the same, rewards the chair uh, starting next year. Uh, a little bit more money, the vice chairs get a little bit more money, recording secretary gets a little bit more money, and uh, I think it makes more sense. So I'd like to recommend that to you as part of this budget. Chair? Yeah. Uh, nope. It's a great idea. I mean, $50 that uh, none of the committee members seem to pay year, it just, where's it go? It just goes away, it doesn't get used. So I mean, it's pretty sad. Goes into you know, free cash. So like, <laughs> yeah, cash is king. I mean, you can mm -hmm. do what you want, but nobody's taking $50 and expecting to have it go someplace where it's uh, benefiting, especially with the work that you guys do with, you know, as chair and uh, secretary. So I would, I would vote for Okay, so uh, are you recommending this a motion as part of the approval of this budget? Uh, I'll make, uh, yeah, I am. Second. Okay, second. second. Okay, second. Any discussion? I just want to make a comment, if I will, that, that Alan had, had run this by both myself and Peter. So, so we knew ahead of time that he was going to propose. Okay. Uh, Charlie? Having just taken the ethics course, can we vote on this? We voted when we reduced it. I don't see why we can't vote it when we increase it. Well, it's it's re it's the committee. Uh, I mean, I guess you could say it's the committee voting on the entire committee. Right. Yeah, so. I think that's the case. Yes, you can always abstain. Legislators can vote on their own salary rise. Their reason to avoid it isn't ethical; it's political. Yeah. Okay. Any others? Just checking. No. Good question to ask. Any other questions or discussion? <coughs> David, is there any other changes? No, that's it. In the total, it's uh, 10701 Okay. Uh, all, those, uh, all those in favor of the Finance Committee budgets as presented with the restructuring of the committee membership salary, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Abstain. Okay, two abstentions. Yeah, I'm staying too. 
Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, you're losing money, so right, you, yeah. there's no conflict here. Okay. How many people um, in favor? Please raise your hand. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Opposed? Zero. Abstentions? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, uh, passes nine in favor, zero and five, and call zero. Okay, uh, any other budgets, David? Uh, we can go to page 19 to select board. Another good reason to pay your tax bills there you go. electronically. So um, we met with, with Ashley today, and uh, there isn't a, a lot of uh, change except for salary adjustments um, in, in the selectmen's budget itself. The, um, the stipends stay the same for the selectmen. Um, the, uh, if, if you remember a year and a half ago, almost two years ago, there was a realignment of the positions within the in the selectman's office, and that is now leveled off. Everything is, is okay. Everything balances. Uh, there was some. <coughs> we had a little discrepancy uh, on, on salaries before. But as far as, uh, but that's all, all been worked out. So it's, um, it, it, this is what it is. Um, as far as selectmen's the selectmen's go, the um, and again. Did some salary adjustments due to the contractual agreements or COLA cost of living adjustments. Um, there is an increase, a slight increase in dues and subscriptions, if you've noticed in, in the column of $400. Um, that's because the prices of these have, have gone up, and they're already uh, realizing that they, they, their appropriation for the current budget is close to getting to the uh, to the max of what we appropriated last year. <coughs> so that's why they, they put them in for $400. Um, and the offsets <coughs> roughly stay the same. <coughs> A little different than last year. $3,980 on the offsets. <coughs> so on the Board of Selectmen, the um, total amount of the appropriation will be $327,049. And then with the offset of $30,000? Yes, $30,337. Okay. For two ninety six. For two ninety six seven twelve. Okay. Is that your motion? So moved. Do you have a second? second. Okay. I'm sorry, was there a second? A second. Okay, second. Okay, questions or discussion? <coughs> Dean? For the vote, don't we have to put the audit report in? What was that, Dean? The audit report was 78,000? Yeah. I think we, I, don't we have to put the audit into the recommended vote? Oh, the audit is a different line item. I think we've always done that as a separate vote. As a separate vote. Any other questions? Okay, so uh, motion, the net number is 296712, been seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Favorable action, unanimous. 
210. Okay, audit. Okay, so the um, audit report is saying last year, $78,000. Okay, is that your motion? So moved. Second. Okay, second. Any discussion, questions? Charlie? Yeah, I'm just wondering why, um, why it went up the prior year, why there was this, this big variance. I mean, it, it, apparently it was back at 63000 and then it went to 49000 and now 78000 If memory serves me right, we're going back to the years. I believe there was an, um, a new process of, in, in relation to the, the way the audit was being done. And going back, uh, I'm trying to remember, in the, the previous controller went into, did something different than the previous con controller before him. And, and that's why that went up in 1919. That's, that's a vague mem memory that I have. That's, that's what I remember too. Um, the uh, auditors were asked to do more than they had been doing right. before by the new Order. Well, between I fiscal 15 and fiscal 16, the town switched from doing a set of audited financial statements to a comprehensive financial right. report. During the comprehensive financial report, there was an incurred cost because the book goes from this to this. And so that was the preliminary in the reason for the increase. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other questions? Okay, motion's been made and seconded. All, uh, any further discussion or questions? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous? 210. Okay. Uh, You're saying 210 is the date? Because I was 210 to 12. Oh, I'm sorry, 212. <laughs> Let me correct the last time I said that. Okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. So, Dean, um, <clears throat> you know the town Im implemented this new uh, Munis system. I think you were part of that when you were there, right? Yeah. So, shouldn't the auditing costs? be less over time with this new system? No. The audit itself, no, it wouldn't come out. Alan? Was it, is this 78,000 just for the capper printouts, or does this also include the powers and so on? Well, they're one and the same. Well, they don't do the cap, they don't produce the cap. Well, the town does, but the power of the audits it and okay. it So the 78,000 includes power of the speed? Yes. Okay. That's the primarily, primary cost of that. Okay, elections. David? Yes. Um, elections. One of the things that, that, that was, was discussed with the elections, they really don't know the cost of the, of the coming election. Because of a number of different factors um, coming up in the current budget, our current budget, there's going to be a, a early election for the presidential <coughs> primary. For this, this for this budget purposes as it stands now, after July 1st, there'll be a, a, a early election for the presidential election, and in that presidential election, there's also state election, and there's is a state primary. They don't know at this point whether, this, whether the state is going to ask for an early, early elections for the state primary. They're definitely going to be early elections for the presidential, and that would normally run four years ago when they first started. If that was the ten straight days. The special the early election coming up at uh, the end of this month is going to run five days for the presidential primary, which would be. Monday through Monday through Friday, town hall hours with the exception Friday where the town hall closes at noon time, it will now open be open at five o'clock. According to the Secretary of State, we cannot open on Saturday. <coughs> I don't know why. So um, 
these are test guess estimates in the past. Adding to that mix is um, the uh, minimum wage has gone into effect as of January 1st. Uh, uh, according to the deputy town manager, it's not minimum wage as it applies to uh, election workers does not apply. But however, uh, across the, the state, they've been added. So it's now 1250. It's going to go up again. Like the cap is fifteen dollars, but I think it's a couple years down the road. So that that kind of adds to the mix. Okay. So I'm sorry. Uh, I was a little confused. The, um, it was declared that the uh, minimum wage does apply or does not apply to? It, according to Sandy, it, it, it doesn't apply to what they're going to apply. It. State minimum wage, which is state right. minimum wage, which is now twelve fifty as of January. I think the federal minimum wage applies to municipalities. Yeah, so it's um, it's um, a lot of the stuff, especially with these early voting now, is in is in flux. To give you an example, if I can just cite that. The clerk's office has purchased two new type of, uh, for lack of a better term, iPads that they're going to try out on early election. <coughs> Rather than, you know, in fact, you go in, give your name, right? Well, these are now going to be done by computer, and, they, and they're trying it out. Um, so that's something. Not connected to the internet, I hope. However, <laughs> you cannot use these machines on a general election, on presidential elections, because the state constitution Massachusetts Constitution it says it has to be a paper ballot. You learn something. In it. So it's, 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 a lot of this is in flux. But that's right. So the um, election total is uh, 186,011. So we'll have uh, three elections next year. We'll have three elections after July 1st. <coughs> right. The prim state primary. The general election, which includes the presidential election, and then our own town election. Yeah. So far. The uh, Marie Kapelka, who, who normally does this budget, um, has been out. And um, Sandy Pooler says that he took last year's budget and scaled it up to account for the for the uh, increase in work in poll worker salaries. And but as Dave says, so we <clears throat> the other new features are, are the cost of those is pretty much unknown. So we may <coughs> we may have a, a uh, transfer request eventually. So this next year will be three elections. Right. This year was two. Right. Town and super, the presidential. Yeah, super Tuesday, right? Super Tuesday is in this. this yeah, so it'll be the town election in April and the presidential primary in March, and that's it. Mm -hmm. okay. And then the year before it was probably, because then you'd have the state state election, the state primary in the town, so that would have been three. Mm -hmm. Okay. Try? <clears throat> Will there be any need for a, a, another, or maybe it doesn't fall in this category, but a town meeting in the fall? Tell you, I, I <coughs> Will there be a, a need for a, t a special town meeting in the fall? Does that fall in this? It's not in the it budget. Fall in here. What? It's not in the budget. It's not, it's not in the budget. budget. But town, the, the regular annual town meeting is in the budget. Mm -hmm. And also remember, we get, re we get somewhat reimbursed by the state for these elections, but we never know the dollar for them until they send us the check. And that money goes into the general, general fund. fund. Mm -hmm. Right. right. So, Okay, so are you recommending as printed 186011? Yes, I am. Second. Any other questions or discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, favorable action, unanimous. 212. Okay, page 49, step would be the legal. Page 
the, um, the legal environment is, is um, as I think if you don't know, uh, the retirement of Ed Malinga, he retired in fact, I think it was around January 12th, January 15th of this year. So that there's a retirement there. And just to give you a, um, a heads up, um, that position was, Ed did 41 and a half years of service to the town of Malinga. So he was here when Mr. Purcell was the town council. <laughs> <laughs> And I was only five years old. So. <laughs> anyway, um, he is one of the employees that participated in the deferred salary payment. So that was in that deferred was five percent in 1984, and another two percent in 1994. That adds up to seven percent, and then you go times the three highest consecutive years of salary. That then jumps to 21 percent. So but, um, there's a possibility that um, they might be coming here for uh, a transfer of funds to offset that, that cost. But uh, there's, there's not many of those employees left that have been here since 84. But yeah. there are a couple of them. So but they did have 41 and a half years of service. And having said that, in a discussion uh, with Peter and I and um, Doug, Town Council, Doug Hine. Um, we're taking a look now, um, currently, at, as to perhaps, if you will, revamping or realigning that position, uh, uh, if you will, up to the 21st century. Um, so it's still in flux. You're not quite there yet. So, so that that will be coming eventually. As to what, what are the, the, the he was the workman's comp um, legal lawyer for us. And ironically, his position and the town council's position were equal. One wasn't over the other. It's been that way for years. So in, in, in taking a look at this now, I feel looking that it might be a cost savings for the future if they take that, that particular job that it had and uh, kind of blend it into with other duties pertaining to the, the legal office. Uh, so that, that's, but that's in the work, it's not, it's not actually strong. Um, so um, again, there's not a lot of difference. Uh, that's what's happening in, in the legal department. So they, they're kind of in a little somewhat of a transition. And Ed is coming back on a consultant basis when he, for now. But they, we understand that he left him in pretty good shape as far as what his duties and responsibilities were all these years. That uh, Doug is right, right on top of that, and the office is right on top of that. He's been a stellar employee. He's mm -hmm. been a great employee. Yeah. So having said that, um, after the offsets, I'm presenting the budget of 480923 Is that your motion? Yes. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Questions or discussion? Charlie? Yeah. <clears throat> Dave, do you know if there are any um, looming workman's comp um, settlements or whatever that are um, in the wind? Currently, my understanding is that no. Uh, in fact, it, it, you know, some, some years it's up and some years it's down. Right, right now it's down. Um, th that doesn't mean that there might be one, but, 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 but nothing. Nothing that'll break the bank or whatever. Right. Doug said that uh, Malenka had worked had worked hard to to achieve that. Other questions? Okay. Motion been made and seconded for four hundred eighty thousand nine twenty three. Um, all those in favor? Uh, further any questions or discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Okay, favorable action, unanimous, 212. Okay? Okay, um, right to the town of clerks, starting on page uh, 54. Peter and I met with the assistant town clerk. 
that office as well is in, is in transition, if you will. Um, so there's some, there's some factors that are unknown at this point. Uh, the office, for all intents and purposes, there are new employees in the office. Um, one is, I think, it might have been her second year, the other one is, is in her first year. That, that those are new employees that they're hired. And that, that's all balanced out. The, um, I don't know if the current if the current clerk what type of benefit package she's in she would be entitled to I'm, I'm not sure about that um, you know <coughs> for full retirement and stuff like that. so it's, it's somewhat in flux and we'll we'll find out as what the future holds so this is sort of a status quo. Transition budget, right? Yes. Right. It's um the um like I said, we we'll all find out eventually. You can understand what I'm saying. Uh, so that budget is um, total clerk staff uh, expenses. That would be uh, two hundred sixty-eight thousand two nineteen. Okay. And there's there's not a lot of changes other than an adjustments, a couple adjustments here. Due to the fact that some things, the price of is going up a little bit, you can notice some increase. Okay, I'm sorry. Did I ask you if that was the motion? Yes. Second. 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 <laughs> Discussion or questions? So as you know, there's an election. That uh, I think there's three candidates. So there'll be change, or we'll see how it goes. Um, any questions? Discussion? Okay, all those in favor of 268-219, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Favorable action? Next. Okay, next one is the uh, Board of Registrars. Notice it's, it's, it's a salary adjustment again, like the other salary adjustment uh, for the assistant registrar. So that would be um, a total of 72,812. I present, that's what I'll present. If you notice there's stipends in here for the for the uh, register of voters, he, they receive a stipend. And it also includes the moderator stipend in the board of registrars. Where's the uh, person who takes the minutes for the town meeting? Is that in the selectman's budget? Yeah. Uh, yes, yeah. Yes, it's in the selectman's budget. Okay. See, what we have here, and it, 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 it's somewhat can be confusing. The selectman side is responsible for the elections, but yet the, the clerk side is, is responsible for the voting in the Board of Registrars. And, it's, and it, I guess it follows back to many the old blue laws. And, um, and it goes back to when the Board of Selectmen, it was a three-member board, and they had the, they had another board called the Board of Public Works. I don't know if you were the, and that was a five-member board. And then somewhere along the line, they did away with the Board of Public Works. They created two more positions on the Board of Selectmen, and that's why you have a five on the Board of Selectmen. And, the, and they, they held on to their election due. That's where it stands today. Okay, okay so is 72812 your motion? Yes. Second? Second. Okay. okay, Charlie. So, um, it, is MISCUS still uh, providing tech support for this department? It, it, is MISCUS? Yeah. Um, I believe it's still, I, I don't necessarily know if it's him. His name is still on here, but um, I, think I he did see him the other day. I think he so retired, I'm not sure. He did retire, but that, that, that 150 was a separate thing. I don't know if they're still using him, because he was there the other day, that's, that's why I said I see, okay, okay. thank you. Any other questions? 
Okay, all those in favor of the 72812, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, favorable action. Now I'm going to defer it to my friend Peter for the town manager's budget. Which starts on page 23. budget. Um, all the uh, uh, salaries are correct. <clears throat> the manager has a, is on a, is in the middle of a contract, uh, so his numbers uh, haven't changed except contractually. So I recommend the uh, the bottom line of 756021. Is there a second? Se <coughs> second. <coughs> now, is there records access coordinator? That looks new. <coughs> the 32,200? That's true. That's true. And what is that position new? Um, my, my, my understanding is because I was a, as of late in the last few years, there's been a lot of requests for um, under Freedom of Information Act, a lot of records, and, and, and it's, it's cumbersome to go back and check it. And so what they decided to do is to actually have a person assigned just to do that. That's my understanding. Just to fulfill the FOIA requests? I mean, just to fulfill <coughs> the FOIA requests, or is this to is make that sure that the records are electronic so they can be used? Yes, the whole, the, the so whole thing. So it's more proactive, it's not just reactive. Right, right, exactly. Got it's it. a combination. Of it's, hopefully it. it's, it's reactive rather than reactive. Well, that's what I'm saying, is that you know, it, it makes sense if it's a proactive position, if it's just somebody sitting there waiting for a FOIA right. request, no. that's a little crazy. It's, it's more than just yeah. by layman's terms. They're going to make an attempt to get on top of it. I, I, don't, I hope they do. Now, is uh, the assistant town manager still over in the facilities? His person is there. I, I, I don't know. I don't know if Peter knows. I know he's he's there, but he's still listed as assistant town. Manager. Right, but he, he's still. Have they replaced the facilities manager yet? No, no, not that I know of. Okay, so because the assistant manager was supposed to be the public access officer, mm -hmm. um, I guess he's doing a couple jobs. Mm -hmm. I, the CPA, um, not CPA, um, Community Preservation Act Committee. Uh, <clears throat> that's what that offset is. Um, it says the CPA, but mm -hmm. it, it, um, <clears throat> twenty percent of of the uh, assistant town manager's salary and twenty percent of the administration admin admin assistant. Are uh, what make up that also? Okay. Okay. Questions? Uh, I'm, Christina? I'm just not clear on what the difference is between the public information officer and the records access coordinator. I think he's uh, a, oh, he, he knows. Public okay. information officer, is the webmaster. Yeah, sir, web and social media communication, marketing communication, so on. So we're Joan Roman, uh, you know, runs the website for the town. And she's now full time rather than yep. yes, part time, and now we're adding a half time. Yes. Well, 
So what Joan does is a little bit more than just run the website. I mean, she's really in charge of communications, for lack of communication. So she's also maintaining the town's e-list. Annie, a little bit louder, please. She's also maintaining the town's e-list and sending out notices and other forms of communication. She's sort of a communications person, not just the webmaster. Like it's broader than that. She also runs the uh, question and answer list too, right? Yes. Yeah. Also part of communications the, uh, and customer service. Mm -hmm. okay. If I'm understanding correctly, what this records access coordinator will do is make sure our records are in good enough shape that we can respond in timely fashion to FOIA requests and proactively provide public records as needed. And th that this position, is, as Al points out, is taking over from Jim Feeney? Because mm -hmm. that's what he used to do. I think it's, it, it, well, I mean, these guys were in the meeting, but I could see it and why it's a separate position, right? There are so lots of records that are not accessible through the right. internet now, through the town's <coughs> website. Right. In particular, the the the, one, the uh, building inspector records. Now, all this is largely because of the public access public records access law yes. that was passed a, was a couple of years ago now. Right, and and also the fact that depending on the nature of a FOIA request, if you're required to respond to a FOIA request and that FOIA request has to do with all the records that we have stacked up on paper that we don't really know what's in them, you, somebody can have to spend a lot of time responding to that FOIA request. It sounds to me like we're trying to get ahead of that by making more of our records electronic, which as a former member of the Board of Selectmen, I can tell you is a very good idea. We have a lot of paper where we don't even know what we know. So, position to work. So, Reef. So, I have a question. This clarification. This management analyst looks like a new position. Is there a possibility? What I'm sorry, I can't hear you. The management analyst. What What does that position do? Just um. to understand. And isn't it new because it says there's no longevity to it, or it's a new person. It's a new person, but the position's been there for a while, like all right, five or six years. What are they well, doing? She does all sorts of odd jobs in, 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 the, in the office. Lots of data analysis. Yeah. Right. It's one that also works on the budgets for Sam. That's what it is. one that's out of the Yes. Well, yeah, Julie works for Sandy. Right. Yeah. So that's what I mean by an analyst. Okay, Charlie? <coughs> yeah, I, I would just note, uh, I mean, I, I, I think the uh, management analyst supports the uh, Community Preservation Act Committee, supports the Capital Planning Committee, supports a whole bunch of boards and commissions. But I, I, I will note that, um, that I think the position, I mean, I know the position is new, this, the, the, the occupant is new this year. Yes. But also, I know, um, looks like was, that person was hired at Max. She moved over from the planning department. That's right. So that may simply have been a matter of what step she was at in the planning department. Right. Okay. Okay, Reef, was your question answered? Yes, thank you. One, one more question. Sure. Just, um, just trying to understand this. Um, there's no mean and max for the town manager position. Is there a reason for that? I mean, no, he's under he's contract. He's not on the M schedule. Yeah, he's not on the M schedule. He's under contract oh, so by the board of selectmen. Mm -hmm. So it's a bit of a different. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. The uh, so, uh, the recommendation is seven hundred and fifty-six thousand zero twenty-one. Yes. Oh, Peter. Yes. Okay, is that seconded? Second. Yep. Any other discussion? Questions? Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, unanimous. Okay, and the last one I have real quick is the zoning one. Oh, okay. That is page 72.
again, this, this is another uh, committee that has been in uh, flux, if you will. But that's all, all been adjusted. If, if uh, the committee itself selects their own chairman by, by state statute, they, they've done that. So it's a committee of five, and they have two alternates that attend every meeting and fill in when needed. In addition, if you remember, uh, the last year or two, we've had some uh, adjustment problems with, with the, uh, if you will, recording secretaries for the zoning. It was kind of a shared position. Now it's um, it's settled. They've, they've hired a person who works 17 hours. That's the salary that they hired him at. And uh, he's very familiar with uh, the zoning and the building. Uh, so that's, that's what it is. So the figure is 32,934. Okay, is that your recommendation? Yes, it is. Second. Second. Okay. Uh, any questions, discussion? Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Favorable action, unanimous. 212.20, okay. Uh, Dave, Peter, that's great. Thank you for getting moving these along. Now, <coughs> our next meeting is on Wednesday the 19th. Um, I might see if the, uh, now the water bodies usually takes a little while. I might see if the manager's willing to come later um, on that. Now when the manager comes in, I'd like to vote those articles when he comes in if, if you want to. Uh, so the manager articles, um, just for those who didn't write them down, the manager will be speaking on articles 7, 11, 12, 26, 48, 51, 56, 57, Now I'm going to throw in 58 and 59 just so we can get the dollar figures. 68 and 71. So it's 7, 11, 12, 26, 48, 51, 56, 57, 58, 59, 68, and 71. Now the reason I wanted those is that take a look at them. If you have any questions, call him. <laughs> uh, if you have some concerns and you want further study, that's fine. We don't have to vote the article. But just to move the process along, I'll go through it, say, OK, uh, now the first few articles are going to be, do we want to hear them at all? Or do we want to vote on them? Uh, and then the other articles, like collective bargaining, it's a dollar figure. We put it in. We just confirm it. Uh, Parking, he should have transportation. Uh, a few of these other ones, we could just go ahead and vote. Um, okay, so uh, you got Monday off to celebrate President's Day. Uh, Wednesday, we'll hear the water bodies, and I'll see if the manager wants to come in. Um, and now, do we have any? Uh, what uh, article or what budgets could people get next Wednesday? We'll have the planning and the uh, redevelopment. Peter and I will okay. be meeting Tuesday. So we'll have it ready for Wednesday. Okay. The, the, and that was that would be it for you guys? Yes. Okay. Anybody else have any budgets? Even small ones? Okay. I'll see if uh, we could we could fill that day up. Um, okay. Is there any other uh, is there any other business for the committee? Okay. Media is adjourned. <laughs>